welcome, and this is your communion service time. If you would like to take the Holy Communion with me, and you know that your sins are forgiven and that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, would you please uh, go to your kitchen and bring yourself a small piece of bread and uh, some grape juice and place it before you there, and in a few moments we will take the communion together. In so many, in so many of our uh, homes, our elderly friends especially, are not able to get out to church. And this very special communion service is especially for you. The teaching is for all of us. You better believe it. It's a great joy to bring you the special lectures regarding the Holy Communion, trusting that it will become a very vital part of our spiritual lives. In these uh, group of talks that we're bringing to you, it would be impossible to evade the problem called 30 pieces of silver. These are the most historic coins, I suppose, in the history of the world. May I read to you from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, beginning at verse 14, these words. It says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas, is Cariot. He went to the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time Judas sought opportunity to betray the Lord Jesus Christ. If scripture could be sad, I suppose you would say this would be the saddest scripture there is. You say, well, is there an end to the story? Yes. You find that in the next chapter. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verse 1 says, And when the morning was come, and the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel together against Jesus to put him to death, and when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor of Judea. Then Judas, which had betrayed Jesus when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And Judas cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest uh, took the 30 pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers therein. Therefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver and the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. Isn't that amazing to think that a scripture could come about so amazing as that? And then we read in the book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 12, And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for me, for my price, 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was priced at, of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. The book of, the book of uh, Zechariah, as everybody knows, was written uh, 400 years before Christ. Such accuracy should prove above, above any doubt or disputation that the Word of God is true, absolutely and completely, because these books were in circulation long before uh, Christ was born, and everyone knew about it. We would call this history's most ignominious money. No money so fraught with ignominy as the 30 pieces of silver that Judas received in selling 
his own Lord and Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. We read about counterfeit money, counterfeit gold, counterfeit silver, with all their remarkable names that they associate with them. But these 30 pieces of silver, there have been songs sung against those pieces of silver. There have been poems written against them. There have been sermon preached against them. Without any doubt at all, the hottest money in all of history were 30 pieces of silver, the price that Judas received for the selling of his own master. I presume the most remarkable and amazing aspect of this is the, is the minute prophecy uh, that not only that there would be 30 pieces of silver that he sold his master for, but that they would be thrown back into the temple and that they would purchase a potter's field. And that means a, a place where they, they buried uh, people that had no money and uh, they, they, they buried people that were strangers passing through and died and had no one to care for them. And, and that was a place, the place of indignity, where they, they buried the nobodies. And it was, it was told 400 years before the Lord was born that he would be betrayed and that he would, uh, uh, that the money that would not be kept by the person that betrayed him but thrown on the temple floor and it would be used to purchase a burial place uh, for those that had no money and those that could not bury themselves. So those 30 pieces were prophetic pieces. You'd want to mark that down very carefully. Prophetic pieces. Many things that happen are prophetic. That means that they're forecast. That means that they're known about beforehand. And God spoke about it so that when it came to pass, you would know that we were in the prophetic scheme and the prophetic plan of God and that we were moving with God. And so those 30 pieces of silver that uh, were secured to betray the Lord Jesus Christ were prophetic pieces of silver. As I told you before, that those 30 pieces of betrayal are in the deepest of infamy that uh, and at this very hour when someone betrays you or deceives you uh, that you will speak up and say you are a, a Judas you don't say you're a James or you're a Paul or you're a Timothy or <laughs> you're a Judas and so from that moment 2,000 years ago until this moment those 30 pieces have brought infamy upon that name of Judas. It's a beautiful name referring to Judah and uh, having to do uh, with the tribe, having to do with a very beautiful part of the world there in Judea. But he, he marred the name until 2,000 years later uh, when the most dastardly thing that could be done to you is done, then you say, you're a Judas. And so it lives in infamy, 30 pieces of silver. I suppose we'd have to say that this made Judas uh, history's number one traitor. There have been many traitors. Every nation has known traitors. It's a sad thing for anyone to be a traitor. When you have a friend, they should always be your friend. You should never betray. That should never, never be, never be. If you have a friend, they should be your friend. And if they have confidence in you, you should live up to that confidence. That's living. That's joyful living. Judas did not do that. He is the number one traitor of all time. And in seeking diligently, you can say, Judas, what was in your heart? What made you do it? Jesus blessed you. <laughs> Jesus fed you. You slept right close to him many nights. You were very conscious of his love. You were conscious of his deep friendship. You communed together when you needed money to buy certain things. You asked him if you should do it, and you were in constant communication one with another. Why would one that you cared so much for would you betray him and sell him for a price? If you'll give me so much, I'll see to it that you have him in bondage in jail. 
I'll take care of that myself. That is a Judas. I can hear some of my neighbors saying, but he was destined to do this. There's no need of having a controversy 2,000 years later. If you would look in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, in the first chapter, it says specifically that Judas, by transgression, fell. Transgression is a deliberate act. Nobody made Judas do what he wanted to do. The inside of Judas caused him to do what he did. He did not do it because he had to do it. He did it because he wanted to do it. A lustful spirit he permitted inside of him, desiring that which he did not have, wanting that which did not belong to him. And lust, when it is conceived, brings forth death. And Judas discovered that, but he discovered it too late. The devil tempted the Lord Jesus Christ, even though Christ had created him, made, and he knew it, he yet tempted the Lord Jesus, and having tempted him, he would certainly tempt Judas, or he would tempt you, or anyone. He is a devil, but you don't have to succumb to him. There is no power in the universe that will make you do it. You do it out of your own lusts. He makes you an offer and you take it. He promises you when you smoke cigarettes that you'll be a sport and you'll be very delightful. He doesn't promise, he doesn't tell you about the cancer. He says if you take a friendly drink of alcohol, how popular you will be. He doesn't tell you about the nobodies down in the red light district. He doesn't tell you about them. The devil is a deceiver. And these 30 pieces were pieces of deception where a man thought he was going to gain something, but he lost everything. To Judas, suddenly, the one that he loved and the one that he recognized as his Lord became as nothing. Thirty pieces of silver were more important than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Suddenly, his own soul meant nothing. He knew it was wrong. He had a conscience, just as you. Suddenly, his own soul didn't mean anything. His own eternity didn't mean anything. Only 30 pieces of silver. What are you selling out for? How much are you getting for your damnation? How much are you getting for your betrayal of your wife, your husband, your children, your church, or even our nation of America? I would say that we have more people in America today that would sell this country for 30 pieces of silver than maybe any nation in history. People that live in this nation and are fed by this nation that don't love this nation. Only God sustains this nation right now and every Christian should hold tight to God and ask God's power to keep this nation. Our land and our country today is selling its Savior for 30 pieces of silver. You say, how? <laughs> There's no Bible in our schools today. The very same people that do not want the Bible in the schools of America have the Bible in places like Israel. And every school and every student's hand and yet in this country, they don't want the Bible in the school. You got an answer for that. Be honest. Are we selling out this nation to the devil? There's no prayer. There's no prayer in our schools today. We have sold it out for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, it would have been a simple thing if the Christians had stood up and said, wait a minute, if they did it now. If the Christians of this land came together and said, we will remove everybody out of Washington, if you don't put prayer back in our schools, it would be back pretty shortly. Those are not big men back there. They're little boys from your own community, every one of them. Are we selling our freedom, our liberty, for 30 pieces of silver? America needs to do more thinking today than it has ever done before. Judas only knew one thing to do, and that was to put a rope around his neck. Is America close to that point today of committing an eternal 
suicide for 30 pieces of silver. The 30 pieces of silver is a colossal and tremendous revelation of a man's heart, of his capabilities of a dastardly deed. Don't trust your own heart. The Bible says out of that heart there comes forth all kinds of evil and sin. Don't trust it. Please don't. Trust Jesus. Trust the Word of God and rebuke the devil. He can make the heart to be hard, to be sinful, to be wicked, to be malicious. That heart needs cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thirty pieces of silver and the human heart selling out the virtues of life, the beauties of life for something that's worth nothing. We throw it down and say, buy a potter's field. <laughs> no enjoyment out of it. I would say that to Judas, those are 30 pieces of disappointment. He had felt that when he got those 30 pieces of silver in his fingers and he rubbed them <laughs> together, he said, what a feeling that's going to be. To think so much money. It might have been the most money he ever held in his bag at one time. Like a bubble, it burst. They were 30 pieces of disappointment. It was so hot. He couldn't hold them in his hands. He threw them all over the temple floor. What a desecration that the men in the house of God through bribery, you know, says, we will pay you if you will find this good man and that we might destroy him. Religion, religion, religion without God can be very dangerous and very harmful, very selfish. Watch religion and don't get in, entwined in the intricacies of political religion. Just read its story in the history pages and stay clear of it. Religion must be filled with love and compassion and care to be what God wanted it to be. As you very well know, these 30 pieces of silver became 30 pieces of death. It was because of the 30 pieces of silver that a man put a rope around his neck and jumped over a bluff and hung from a tree. It was a 30 pieces of silver that brought the termination of the human life. They were 30 pieces of death. It's very easy for you to want something that's not yours and to crave for something that's not yours. And when you get it, it brings death, not life. Not life, but death. Not joy, but disappointment. May I urge you right now, never forget those 30 pieces of silver and never betray God or your country or your family or any friend. Betrayal is of the devil. Love and appreciation and honesty and sincerity are from God. At this moment, I would like for you to come with me into the upper room in Jerusalem. And just before he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus Christ said with great desire, do I desire to eat with you this last supper? And there he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Eat it. His bones were not broken. His flesh was broken by the stripes. And Isaiah said, 700 years before Christ came, by his stripes, you're healed. We receive healing for our total being, our body, our soul, our spirit. 
healing balm, healing of memories, healing of things that passed in yesteryear. How glad we are he heals the past. And then he took the fruit of the vine and he said, this is the blood of the New Testament and I want you to drink it. This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. And he gave it to his disciples to drink. And this was the birth of the new covenant. This is what binds the Christian church together. This is what makes us one. If you are now ready, I would like for us to receive together the Holy Communion. The Lord Jesus Christ said, with great desire have I desired to eat this with you. And he said, this is the new covenant. And as oft as you do this, you do show my death until I come back again. Therefore, I want you to come with me and let us participate together. You say, Brother Sumrall, how do I know that I'm worthy to do this? You want to be sure your sins are washed away and that you belong to God. And if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can do this along with me. And you can receive the spiritual strength, the spiritual blessing, the holy anointing that you need for this hour. God wants you to have it. And so the Lord Jesus to his disciples says, this is the bread. I want you to eat it now. Shall we eat together, please? And we thank you, Lord, for the bread that you gave to your disciples. Speaking of your body, you gave of yourself the wheat that was placed into the ground that it might die and spring up unto life. And as we eat, we become a part of you, and we thank you for it. Amen. May God bless the bread that we have eaten together. And may you be healed right now by his power. May you be gloriously healed. I command your pains to come out of your body, your arthritis to come out of your joints, the disease to come out of the various parts of your body, the organs of your body, and that you be healed right now. Receive within yourself his strength. This moment, we thank him for it. The Bible says after the same manner, the Lord Jesus Christ took the cup. And after he had supped, he gave it to his disciples. And he said to drink it. And one by one, they drank together. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. This is the covenant of grace, the covenant of life. And he said, drink it. Let us drink together. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed that cleanses us from all our sins. We thank you for it. If you have sin in your life, <coughs> the blood of Jesus Christ <coughs> covers it. He can cover you right now. Feel it, accept it, and thank him for it. 